I'm Tobias Nagley, Editor-in-Chief at Air and Space Forces Magazine. We're here at AFA's 2025 Aerospace and Cyber Conference with Jeff Holtberg. Jeff, you're with Elbit uh, Systems America. Um, and we are looking at kind of the future of heads-up displays. Would you tell us a little bit about the Zero-G uh, helmet that you're, we're standing by? Now? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, again, I work for Elbit America. The, the helmet, the fixed wing helmet mounted display Zero-G and all of our entire fixed wing helmet mounted portfolio uh, is really driven through our joint venture, Collins Elbit Vision Systems, CEVS. So this is a CEVS product. The, uh, the Zero-G helmet mounted display system was, was really built from the ground up to support the sixth generation, that next generation fight, the, the next generation battle space and, and enable the air crew to be able to absorb the information that's, that's coming from everywhere around them uh, uh, and, and be able to act and make decisions off of that. So I'm gonna date myself a little bit. We were talking about this earlier. 1988, I went and saw a, uh, a helmet mounted display concept it had to be lowered down over the, from the ceiling at Wright-Patterson and onto my shoulders. It was enormous, it was heavy, it was powered by cathode ray tubes. And that technology evolved into the, the helmet mounted display or, on, uh, that you flew with. That, that's correct. So my, my background, uh, and don't, don't hold it against me, I was a Navy guy. I flew Navy F-18s um, with the joint helmet mounted queuing system. Um, uh, so. The helmet system that you saw likely evolved into the GEMIX, or the Joint Helmet Mounted Cueing System. Now the GEMIX has been flying for over 30 years. Uh, it started off on the F-15, F-16, and F-18. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, it's a cathode ray tube. It's, it's fairly heavy. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, it's not just heavy, but the center of gravity is fairly far forward, but it's a capability that's uh, uh, very much in need still today. And it's a capability that's still viable today. So, to, you know, uh, consider it a point and shoot uh, uh, capability that's very relevant, again, still today in the visual arena. All right, so after that, the next kind of big generation shift is the F-35 helmet mounted display. And that looks a little bit like this. Um, and it's, it's more integrated and you can see more things. Um, but this is, sort of sixth generation versus fifth. So let's talk about what fifth generation introduced, and that's your helmet, right. um, and what, we'll, what we gain in the next generation. Correct, so, so the, the, that 35 helmet, as, as you mentioned, it, 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 frankly, it's the only fifth generation helmet flying today. The only fifth generation helmet that's flown in the last 10 years. Um, what, what a fifth generation helmet brought to the air crew was a binocular two-eye capability and bringing with that the ability to show video. And that video either being your dispersed aperture system that the F-35 has, the DAS system, or the integrated night vision. The integrated night vision with the night vision camera embedded in the helmet itself. Now that's the fifth generation capability. With the sixth generation capability, what we're doing is expanding that display space right to a much wider field of view, bringing in high resolution displays, high resolution color. And what that enables you to do is now to take advantage of improved symbology sets, leveraging augmented, augmented reality, and fundamentally uh, uh, be able to again, take that additional information from onboard and offboard sensors and present that to the pilot in a way in which it can be absorbed and then acted on. So the fifth generation aircraft, you know, a lot of people think really about stealth, but the, the, the great leap ahead is the sensor data, the amount of, of intelligence and, and information that you've got at your fingertips. The, the, these displays really help make that much clearer, make it easier for a pilot to, to recognize and process what they're seeing. Uh, but, they uh, they have never been zero g. They have right. they 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 present a uh, a weight that you've got to carry on your head. Correct. How have you addressed that with this design? Well, so, so there's really there's really two pieces to, to building a warfighter helmet, right? Mm -hmm. Not not a not a training helmet, but a warfighter helmet. One 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 is the the system architecture itself, and the the system architecture and able to support. You still need to support 
the DAS capability that you have in the F-35, the night vision capability. In order to support that video, you need very high accuracy uh, uh, tracking, uh, very, very low latency, uh, predictive algorithms so that so that you can the anticipate picture, where the head is turning. Right, the picture you see is 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 actually based on reality. Now that's the, the system architecture around it. When you start talking about building those information sets and uh, 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 that symbology set so that the air crew can now absorb all the additional information that's going to be layered on top of that. Imagine now you have this very wide field of view display and with that wide field of view display, you have more display space to disperse that, that information. Color and depth to that display allow you to layer that information. And again, make it so that the air crew don't have to think heads down, they see one set of information. Heads up, they see another information. Instead, you're, you're melding what they see heads down to heads up. So when you look heads down, you have, the, you have your situational awareness based on that God's eye view. When you bring it heads up, now it's three-dimensionally displayed around you. And again, it's all about getting that information to the eyeballs, up to the brain, so air crew can make the appropriate decisions, whether it's for their aircraft, defense or an attack maneuver, whether it's for their CCAs, or passing that information on to their brain. So when we talk about the, you know, the need for more processing power in the cockpit of, of an F-35 or an F-47, we're really talking about one of the capabilities is to be able to present all that information to the pilot. Uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, absolutely. And, and, and the other aspect of the warfighter capability, a warfighter helmet, uh, and, and you, you, you briefly alluded to this, was the weight itself. And if, as you recall from 35 years ago, the helmet that came down on the chains and what eventually evolved into the Jehemix, that weight and that that weight was really centered up, up on top of the, the forehead, mm -hmm. which creates a moment arm. Now, with the last decades worth of data that shows pilot health and injury affected by, it's not just helmet mounted display weight, but headboard weight, right? Mm -hmm. um, that impact having, having an effect on our pilots, there's an, a renewed focus to reduce the weight and improve that balance. Mm -hmm. So what have you done? How have you done that? So what we've done is, is by moving to this waveguide technology, we've really driven the weight of the displays themselves down to a pair of glasses. Now there's some, right, there's some additional structure that's around it because it needs to be safety certified. So we built a helmet from the ground up to be safety certified. That includes ejection up to 600 knots. That adds a little bit of weight, but fundamentally, you don't have that cathode ray tube anymore. You have a very lightweight digital waveguide design that gives you that uh, high resolution wide field of view display. Now also, we've taken the electronics and we've moved them across the helmet. So what you've done is you've moved the moment arm from the, forearm, from the forehead all the way back across the head and now the, the center spread it, out. spread it out. Now the center of balance sits right on top of the neck. So you don't have a moment arm that pulls the head forward anymore. Fundamentally, much more comfortable helmet, much lighter, you can't get all the weight out, but it's much lighter than anything else in the world. How long before, I mean, this is, this is a, a, an IRAD independent uh, self-funded R&D, so where do we go from here? How, how, how does the, uh, the, the airman of the future get one of these? So, so you're right, this, was, this, this entire project was based off of internal investment to build the helmet that you see here today. And, the, and again, the helmet that you see here today, this is, this is the, the combat ejection safety worthy helmet that, that you're going to see in the fleet. Uh, what we're excited about today is that we are, we are on a program of record now. We do have a program that's going to drive the helmet through its safety certification in the middle of next year, and we expect to move into production by the end of next year. And that would be for fifth generation airplanes, for sixth generation airplanes? So in, in this case, we had the U.S. Navy leading the way with production of that helmet mounted display on their legacy F-18s. They would be replacing all of their Jehemix, not the sub subsystem, but the Jehemix helmets themselves with the zero G. We are also working with the Air Force on some other efforts that will bring this capability to the Air Force as well. So possibly on the, uh, on the F-15EX? We are, we are working in that direction, that's correct. So we, we're, we're hoping that the Air Force takes advantage like the Navy did with the lightweight helmet that can be driven back to your legacy fighters, 
that can support the sixth generation mission as well as your fifth generation fighters. But they take advantage of this, leverage the risk reduction activity that the Navy has, uh, has invested in and be able to drive that capability into their own fleet. So one, one last question, what is the, what's, what's the weight savings? How much, how much less weight on my, uh, uh, on my neck? We're, we're talking weight savings of 25 to 30% less. Wow. Very good. Fairly significant, yes. And, and again, fundamentally you're taking that weight and spreading it out also across the helmet. So it is, it is the lightest fighter helmet mounted display uh, uh, helmet in the world and it is the most balanced. Terrific. Jeff Holberg and uh, Albert America, this was a really fascinating discussion. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you very much.